Julita pushes her head into the kitchen and locks her up, as Lee gradually becomes too weak to stand up, because Julita has just cut the gas pipe. By the time Julita regrets making such a big mistake, Leslie has lost all consciousness. Meanwhile, her husband Furhead is driving to the house in a hurry. He grabs Julita by the hair and asks where his wife is. Julita runs away to avoid being killed by him. Furhead kicks the door open and rushes to the hospital with his wife in his arms. He keeps praying that his wife and the baby in her womb will be safe and survive. After taking her to the hospital, Farhat thought back to the last time, he took her to the hospital after a car accident. But then he was so cruel to make Asli abort the baby. It wasn't until he took Asli to the hospital again, that Farhat realized how much Asli meant to him. <laughs> Just when Asli's baby's heartbeat could not be detected, she had a dream. In the dream, Asli's son's name was Mert. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Asli is out of danger, the baby in her womb is still very weak. Asli's survival after this murder means there's nothing to keep her from being with Farhat. <laughs> Asli took the opportunity to tell him not to blame his mother and try to understand her. In order to pacify her, Farhat also promised to try and understand. Asli's baby was exceptionally strong and survived another crisis. Asli, who has just recovered a little, doesn't want to stay in the hospital and wants to go home. But the hospital won't let her out yet, so Asli comes up with a brilliant idea. She asks one of Farhat's men to pretend to be unwell to distract the doctor. <laughs> the two of them take the elevator and leave the hospital while the doctors are distracted. And of course, the funniest part is that Farhat's men grabbed the gynecologist and cried about his broken bones. The two of them got home, they began to live as a loving couple again. I can finally stop watching them fight. <laughs> when Asli got out of the shower, she realized her ring was gone. There was only a note left on the bed. <laughs> so Asli started dressing up and putting on lipstick. As soon as she came downstairs, she saw a candlelit dinner in the garden. Farhat learned it to pull the chair for his wife this time. And he really learned it from Asli's experience of dealing with people. Now he's very soft-spoken. Asli has made a new condition for this marriage. She wants to see Farhat in a tuxedo, who has never worn a formal dress in front of the public. No matter how much Farhat resists her proposal, Asli makes it clear that his freedom is over. Now it's the year of the two of them, I just want them to be happy and the drama to have a happy ending. Then I can go and rest, but the scriptwriters have to make something dramatic before they'll let me go. The next day, the couple was decorating the new room for the new baby. Farhat is getting softer and softer, I don't see any hint of the gangster in him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Farhat's mom got sick. Asli noticed something wrong with his mom's medicines and realized that she was very sick and in a serious condition. But Farhat's mom stopped treatment. Farhat's brother and sisters persuaded Farhat to make up with his mom and stop fighting. Their mom didn't want to recover and stop the treatment because she didn't get his forgiveness. Farhat never gave them an answer, but was alone painting the walls of his kid's new house. It looked like Asli had to talk to Farhat to make it work. Then Farhat came to visit his mom at his brother's house and say a lot of things that touched her. It's like he's possessed by Asli. <laughs> then Asli went to the courtyard to pick up a wedding dress with Farhat. They decided to have a happy wedding again. The couple, intent on getting married all over again, went to the wedding store to pick out a dress. Asli wanted Farhat, who always wore black, to wear a tuxedo. But Farhat went into the fitting room and didn't come out for a long time. Asli thinks of how she ran away from the bridal store when she married him. Worried that her husband might not want to wear a tuxedo and run away, she hurriedly pushes open the door of the fitting room and enters. Farhat doesn't look like a killer at all. I'm not used to him being so gentle now. <laughs> On the night of the wedding, the two of them dressed in their respective wedding gowns and presented themselves in their happiest state. <laughs> In the middle of the wedding, Farhat's uncle called Farhat's mom and asked her to meet him. Farhat's mom went to the uncle's hideout and tricked him into revealing his crime. It turned out that Farhat's mom had already contacted the police before meeting him. Farhat and his brother were listening to their conversation. The uncle lost his mind and tried to start a fire and die with his mom. Farhat rushed into the fire and pushed his mom out. The uncle wanted Farhat to call him father, but Farhat never did. At the last moment when the house was about to be burned to the ground, the uncle pushed Farhat out and died alone in the fire. 
Leslie embraces her husband and mother-in-law after seeing them safe and sound from the crisis. Finally now all the bad things and bad people are solved. All the problems of this family have been cured by the angel Leslie. And of course, the little angel in her womb is amazing too. He finally comes out of the womb after many perils. The family celebrates their future happiness in the garden. Farhad's cousin also comes to the garden with her daughter whom she bore to Farhad. Now she doesn't ask for his love anymore, but wishes Asli happiness and her son a long life and all the best. Later another one of the guests they had invited to the feast apologizes for his being late and sends his blessings. From the way Farhad's cousin looks at him, I can't guess that perhaps she's about to find her love. The TV series called Black and White Love is finally coming to an end. This is Maroon Recap. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel.